Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, we are into the interview preparation of day 4 and in this video we are going to discuss about a very very important machine learning algorithm that is called as decision trees. We'll try to understand the most important interview questions with respect to decision trees and guys, trust me, decision trees are very important because as you all know, most of the favorite interviewers, right, they like random forest and XG boost. So if you know properly about decision trees, definitely you'll be able to answer regarding random forest too. And with respect to decision trees, you know, what are the important interview questions I've noted down over here? They'll ask you about the theoretical understanding of decision trees, you know, how decision trees actually work. Some of the key terms like entropy, information gain and guinea impurity. So all these things they will try to ask. They'll also try to ask how does decision tree work for categor categorical and numerical features. Suppose you have independent and dependent features. Suppose in your independent features you have category features. Similarly in your output feature also you have category features, right? It may be a multi-class classification problem. It may be binary class classification problem, right? Similarly with respect to suppose if in your features you have continuous variables, how does the feature gets divided, right? Or how the decision tree gets constructed. So it is also a very important question in this third. Then what are the scenarios where decision trees work well? These are the common questions that are asked in decision trees. I'll be discussing all about this. First, let me just mention all the important interview question. One property of decision tree is that it has low bias and high variance. This is because of overfitting. So I'm just going to write over here because of overfitting. And for this, I have all created videos. So you can actually check it out. I'm going to show you the links also. I've given all the links over here from where you can actually refer. Then you have hyperparameter uh, techniques that basically means uh, by default, if you just directly apply decision tree, it leads to low bias and high variance because the decision tree is getting constructed to its complete depth. So because of that, we need to do something called as post pruning or we, we need to use some number of max features. There are a lot of parameters which I'm actually going to discuss in which we are actually going to cover in the hyperparameter tune techniques, right? Hyper high, uh, hyperparameter tuning techniques, right? Then uh, we have library used for constructing decision trees. Now it is also present in SKL and you can easily construct a decision tree with the help of code. That video link also I'll be providing over here. We'll also be discussing about the impact of outliers of decision tree, impact of missing values on decision tree. Does decision tree require feature scaling? Right. So all these things we'll try to discuss and we'll discuss in a better way. So uh, first of all, for getting the theoretical understanding, guys, uh, you need to go through the 37, 38, 39, 40 tutorial of my complete machine learning playlist. So I have actually started with entropy in decision tree. You have to remember this particular formula, guys. It is very, very important. This actually indicates that how a decision tree actually split features, right? By using this simple formula, please make sure that you watch this particular tutorial. In this tutorial, I've discussed about entropy. And then you can see that in the 38th tutorial, I've actually discussed about information gain. Entropy is one kind of parameter. The other kind of parameter is something called as Guinea impurity. So here also I have discussed about Guinea impurity in depth intuition in decision trees. So this is the formula behind over here. We'll also understand what is the basic difference between entropy and Guinea impurity. This is the most favorite interview questions asked with respect to decision tree guys. And trust me, decision tree is like must because it is important. This actually forms the base of the random forest and XG boost. Okay. Then coming to the 48 tutorial, in this 48 tutorial, I've also shown you how you can split, uh, how can you, you can use decision tree for splitting numerical features. After this, you should also uh, specify them that how you're going to, what is the exact difference between classification and regression problem when we are actually solving with the help of decision trees, okay? After this, uh, you'll be able to see that I've also uploaded how to visualize decision tree. So for that, I have actually made a video, again, easy way to visualize decision tree. So here, uh, this is with the help of sklearn library itself in point in the recent version of sklearn that is 0.23.0. Uh, there you'll be able to see that the library has some inbuilt function like plot tree and all. So there you'll be able to see this uh, visualization stuff. So here you can see this. I'm just going it forward. This is how the decision tree will get constructed. Uh, it depends on the type of parameters, depends on the information gain. All this information will be easily visible. With this, you'll be able to decide or you'll be able to understand that how the decision tree has been constructed. Okay, so this was the next. 
Now coming to this, you can see that guys from this, right? All the interview, important interview questions we have actually covered around four to five questions. Uh, if you cover all these particular things, right? In this, I've also covered uh, practical implementation uh, in this, uh, when you'll be doing how to visualize decision trees there, I've also solved a use case where you can actually follow and see how the decision tree has been constructed. After this, just try to create an end-to-end -end application by using that same model, okay? Now, what are the basic assumptions? There are no such assumptions. Let us understand some of the advantages of decision tree because I'm going to discuss about this, right? Decision tree, low bias, high variance, and all, uh, everything I'll be discussing. So, uh, advantages of decision tree. First of all, you have a clear visualization. The algorithm is simple to understand, interpret, interpret and visualize as the idea is mostly used in our daily lives. Output of a decision tree can be interpreted by humans. Guys, decision tree is just like a simple if else clauses, you know, multiple if else clauses. So it is trying to cover more as much as it can, you know, like that. So uh, it is simple and easy to understand. The second advantage is that you can see over here decision tree looks like simple if else statement, which are very easy to understand. Decision tree can be used for both classification and regression problem statement. This is the major advantage. It can handle both continuous and category features. Uh, it is also very, very good because based on that, I've actually made a video over here, right? You can actually go through this, all these five videos. I think it will answer everything. Okay. Um, no feature scaling is required. Definitely no feature scaling will be required because we are trying to split the features uh, and uh, the splitting of the features with respect to category and numerical features, the technique will be different. So for that feature scaling is not required. Feature scaling will only be required where you are actually trying to use uh, distance parameters uh, like Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance in the machine learning algorithm. So make sure that over here feature scaling need not be required. Okay. Uh, feature scaling basically means standardization, normalization is not required. Okay. Um, then you also have a property like it handles non-linear parameters efficiently because we are just trying to divide it into multiple trees itself, multiple sub trees. So because of that, it will be able to handle the non-linear parameters also. Okay. Uh, decision tree can automatically handle the missing values. Also, this is a wonderful property of decision tree altogether, guys. It will be able to handle the missing values. Decision tree is usually robust to outliers and can handle them automatically. So a favorite interview question that our decision tree sensitive, sensitive to outliers. Um, and when I was checking out some of the blogs, they say that, yes, it is sensitive to noise. They are sensitive to outliers. But again, I went to see, uh, some more blogs, some more information. Uh, quite important information, uh, resourceful information were there and there, they were clearly explained that uh, they are robust to outliers because they will be creating a specific path, right? And within that path, it will be included. If there are some outliers also, probably in that specific path, it may get included, right? So it is uh, very much important that you understand that it is usually robust to outliers and decision tree can handle automatically the missing values. This is also very, very good. Okay. Uh, it requires less training period. Training period is less as compared to random forest because it generates only one tree. In random forest, you have to use multiple uh, trees, right? 100 decision trees and all. By default, it uses 100. But in decision tree, probably the, less, uh, the training period is lesser than the random forest. But uh, with respect to this, guys, uh, what, let's, let's see some disadvantages, okay? Uh, but I hope you have understood over here. I'll, I'll still discuss about uh, this one that is how decision tree has low bias and high variance, which is pretty much important and how we can actually reduce that. Okay. So let's go to the disadvantages. The first disadvantage is overfitting. Now let's see what is overfitting over here. Now, uh, if I go and can see this decision tree guys, so let me just show you. If I see this decision tree for a specific problem, if I don't use any parameter in decision tree, right? What it does is that it, uh, it creates the decision tree completely to its depth, right? And when it completely creates to its depth, that basically means this decision tree will work well for the training data, right? So there will be low bias. Okay. There will be low bias with respect to training data. Since we are not used any hyperparameter tuning, we are just used the constructed the decision tree completely to, to its depth because of that, it overfits the training data much more properly. But what if with the training uh, test data, right? With the training data, it has been overfitted. But with respect to the test data, what happens is that it gives you some bad accuracy, right? So at that time, it usually causes high variance. So in order to fix this, we basically perform something called as hyperparameter tuning. So here, what we do is that we try to post prune and post prune basically means that after we construct a decision tree, we will try to Suppose uh, till this particular level, I'll try to construct only the decision tree. I'll not construct after this. 
and there are various ways there are various ways which i have actually discussed over here in this particular video how to perform post pruning in decision tree not only this guys there are other parameters also there are parameters like max depth minimum sample split you know minimum sample leaf this all can be done with the help of hyperparameter tuning like grid search cv or randomized search cv we can use max features how many number of features we need to use while we are actually splitting all those things can be basically used along with your hyperparameter tuning techniques okay but understand this is the most important thing and that is why it leads to overfitting overfitting basically means that there you're not using any parameters within the decision and finding out the exact parameter is also very very difficult so because of that we have to perform hyperparameter tuning okay so in order to fit the no no noisy data it keeps generating new nodes and ultimately the tree, tree becomes too complex to interpret as i told you decision tree is just like if else clause now if i am constructing if else if else based on the if else i am constructing various sub branches then what will happen the decision tree will become longer it will become more complex so here i've put this paragraph saying that this is the main problem under decision tree generally leads to overfitting of data which ultimately leads to wrong prediction in order to fit the data even noisy data it keeps generating new nodes and ultimately ultimately the tree becomes too complex to interpret in this way it loses generalization capabilities perform very well on the trained data but start making a mistakes on the unseen data or the validation data or the test data right so high variance and uh, definitely there will be high variance low bias problem statement that is the problem with respect to overfitting right then you have unstable again okay, once a decision tree is actually constructed suppose if we get a new kind of data then again that whole decision tree will also become unstable probably that decision tree will not be able to uh, you know incorporate those data points this is also one very very important guys with respect to performance it is not suitable for large data set suppose if i have a data set of 1 million data points just imagine for constructing a decision tree with multiple if else blocks okay, how much time it may take right so this is not suitable for large data sets uh, we should not try to use it uh, in this case we should use random forest instead of a single decision tree right so <clears throat> this was all the disadvantages and probably all these videos has been uploaded guys i think i have i've made lot of videos with respect to decision tree where i have covered everything you just have to go and follow this particular link the next question is with respect to whether feature scaling is required or not so the answer is no because understand feature scaling is only required for algorithms which uses some kind of distance parameter so that the training can be easily done for example i can take linear regression uh, i can take logistic regression there you probably may be requiring feature scaling like normalization and all uh, uh in what is the impact of outliers it is not sensitive to outliers obviously you know that decision trees are not sensitive to outliers the reason is that since extreme values of outliers never cause much reduction in rss they are in, never involved in split and tree based methods are insensitive to outliers this is pretty much important because this same thing follows with respect to random forest and probably xgboost right so <clears throat> types of problems it can solve classification regression problem statement then you have overfitting and underfitting how to avoid overfitting guys understand again i'm telling you you have to check out this particular video how to perform post pruning in decision trees again the link of that particular video is given over here right and again there are different parameters which you can use so if i take an example in this classifier right you have parameters like criterion you can perform hyperparameter tuning on criterion splitter max depth means uh, sample lift means sample split right and then you have mean weight fraction so based on this all parameters you can also perform hyperparameter tuning max feature is also one of the important features where you can use either of this to select the number of features for uh, performing the decision tree split so you can do hyperparameter tuning with this and apart from that you can also perform post pruning to actually do the uh, basically to handle the overfitting and the underfitting conditions right so this is pretty much important with respect to the outlier with respect to feature scaling these are some of the important questions uh, again i have also given you some practical implementation you can check it out over here if you go down here you'll be able to see all the different different uh, practical implementation techniques along with constructing the decision tree you similarly have with respect to decision tree regressor you can check it out over here again the link will be given over here itself and some of the performance metrics that you can work on is classification is like confusion matrix precision recall f1 score similarly in case of regression you have r square adjusted r square msc rmsc and mean absolute error so i have probably covered everything with respect to decision tree guys this is pretty much important because this forms the base of random forest and the xgboost which i am actually going to discuss in my next video 
uh what i'm going to do with respect to interview preparation guys for every two days i'm going to upload one video because some of my subscribers were saying that krish don't continuously put with respect to interview preparation because we need at least one day to prepare so if I, for every two days i'm going to upload one one video with respect to this right so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye